Hello and welcome to this short pre-learning video on how to examine a patient's thyroid status and thyroid gland. This is just a summary of the key points. It is still necessary to attend a workshop to cover the exam in more detail. Wash your hands and perform your usual introductions. Explain the examination and gain consent. Ensure the neck is adequately exposed and ask if they have any pain. Start with a general inspection of the patient. Observe if they are dressed appropriately for the weather. Are they sat comfortably or do they appear anxious or agitated? Are they over or underweight? Inspect the patient's hands. Are they dry or sweaty? Warm or cool? Look for oncolysis, palmar erythema and check for thyroid acropachy. Also look for a peripheral tremor which may occur in hypothyroidism. Feel the pulse. Note the rate and rhythm looking for any tachycardia, arrhythmias such as AF, or bradycardia. In the face look for signs of thyroid disease which may include, apathetic expression, malaflush or pallor, the loss of the outer third of the eyebrows, thin brittle hair, dryness of hair and skin or edema. Around the eyes look for any periorbital edema, or signs of exophthalmos, such as being able to visualize the sclera above and below the iris. Examine for proptosis from the side and above, observing if the eye protrudes past the supraorbital ridge. Hold your finger up and ask the patient to follow your finger downwards with their eyes, keeping their head still. Look to see if their eyelids lag behind the movement of the eyeball. Ask the patient to hold their head still and to follow your finger with their eyes. As you draw a H shape, ask them about any new double vision, and observe for ophthalmoplegia. Inspect the neck from the front and sides. Look for any skin changes or scars, particularly in the skin folds. Look for any masses, lumps, or obvious goiters. If you suspect a mass, ask the patient to swallow and observe for its movement. The mass moving may indicate that it's embedded within the thyroid gland. Then ask the patient to protrude their tongue, as a thyroglossal cyst may move upwards. Palpate for the thyroid gland from behind, place your middle three fingers of each hand along the midline of the neck beneath the chin, and slowly move them downwards. Palpate for the laryngeal prominence and the thyroid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage sits inferiorly to this, with the cricothyroid membrane in between. Palpate for the thyroid gland beneath this, and the right and left low by the side. A normal thyroid gland may not necessarily be palpable. For any lumps, masses or goiters be sure to assess for size, shape, surface, symmetry, location, mobility, consistency and tenderness. Note if a goiter is unilaterally or diffusely enlarged and if it is smooth or nodular. Are you able to palpate beneath the lump or does it extend retrosternally? If there is a mass, ask the patient to drink some water and palpate again to determine if it moves on swallowing. Perform a systematic lymph node examination. Submental. Submandibular. Preauricular. Postauricular. Anterior cervical. Supraclavicular. Posterior cervical. And occipital. Percusta listen for dullness caused by a retrosternal mass. Or sclitate each lobe of the thyroid gland for any bruise.
If a large retrosternal goiter, or masses suspected perform Pemberton's test, ask the patient to lift their arms above their head and hold them there. This maneuver further narrows the thoracic inlet which may exacerbate any symptoms of thoracic inlet obstruction the patient may be experiencing. To assess for proximal myopathy ask the patient to stand from the sitting position without using their hands. Examine the shins for signs of pretubial myxedema. Finally, examine for brisk or delayed relaxation of the reflexes.